anything you could do to bring people into the store, it's, it's always going to be a positive. Are you looking for a business investment that's easy to start, flexible, and cash generating? Then opening a laundromat is for you. Welcome back to Laundry Money. This is your place to hear the ins and outs of every step of the design, construction, and operation of your laundry business. I'm Max Brandstetter, podcast producer at Hippo Direct and host of the Wild Business Growth Podcast. And I am here with Howard Shear and Rex Anderson from Lakeside Laundry Equipment, your guides every step of the way. Howard and Rex, how are you today? Hi, Max. It's Howard Shear with Lakeside Laundry Equipment. Hey, Max. This is Rex Anderson with Lakeside Laundry Equipment. Guys, this, this is fantastic. And uh, believe it or not, this is already episode seven, the recap episode of Laundry Money. And so in the first six episodes here, we have talked plenty about everything from why you should start a laundromat business to how to maximize the cash flow in your laundromat business. And this is the recap episode. So we're going to cover some of the highlights of what we've talked about so far and uh, give each of you a chance to restate some of your favorite moments and, and favorite concepts from this season of laundry money. So we're going to start off with you, Howard. And to kick things off, we're going to go back to episode one, which is all about why should I start a laundromat business? So you will never guess this question, but why should I start a laundromat business? The name of the podcast is what, Max? Laundry Money. That's why. Making money. Investing a nominal amount of your time of the benefits of growing your business and increasing your net worth. And it's pretty powerful when you think about it. And, and you guys know better than anyone how, how impactful and helpful a partner can be on that side of things. So if that is why you should start a laundromat business, then how do you start a laundromat business? Rex, can you share some of the, some of the key things to know from that standpoint? Great question, Max. The first thing you're going to want to do once you decide that you want to start a laundromat business, um, you're going to want to get pre-approved for financing. Um, and then from there, once you have that in place and you meet all those qualifications, uh, you're going to want to find a location. You're going to want to find a spot that uh, that meets all the requirements of, of all the key demographics that we look for, whether that be you know high renter population, large families, traffic patterns, median household income is another one, and then you also need to uh, build a store based on traffic patterns. Uh, you don't want to be you don't want to build a store in a place that has nothing else around it. You want you want your customers to be able to go other places, whether that be to the grocery store, the you know be close to one of those, be close to a dollar store, be close to um, restaurants anything like that. So once you decide you want to build a laundromat or in half the battle is finding the right spot. And that's half the battle. There's plenty more of the battle, of course, and you guys have plenty of experience there. The next episode is episode three. And there we talked about just how profitable could a laundromat business be. So Howard, can you share some high level estimates of how profitable this business can be? What can really drive that profit? It's amazing to me that more people aren't looking at laundromats as an investment. When we first opened our first store and start seeing 32% was actually the hard number. And then being able to appreciate the equipment and pay very little taxes on that profit. It was mind blowing how quickly we paid off our loans and the store was cash flowing. Having said that, your revenue is definitely based upon how hard you work at it and how well you manage the store. Everything needs to be managed and managed properly. We will help you set up a program that will help you run your store under the same auspices that we've done all of our stores at, which is clean, well-lit, equipment working, and friendly location. And that's what really makes the difference there. And those are things that can lead to profit. But of course, as we know, there are plenty of expenses to consider as well. So Rex, let's talk about the main topic of episode four, which is how expensive is starting a laundromat business? 
So reasonably, you can expect to put about 25 to 30% of total project cost up front. Um, that's how much you'll need. Uh, obviously, a, big, you know, a significant portion of it's going to be finance, which is why you want to get you know, pre-approval uh, in place and get, your, get a banking relationship in place with a laundry-specific bank that, that knows the industry uh, before you even get started. That way, you're not you know, spinning your wheels. And then from there, uh, reasonably, depending on the, the size of the store, uh, whether you're looking to build your own location, you know, whether you're going to own the location, whether you're going to rent, um, obviously, you know, the, those costs are going to, you know, vary pretty significantly. A good reasonable estimate is expect to put in $150 per square foot. The square foot estimate. And Howard, of course, there are costs in addition to the upfront costs and initial things to consider, what other costs are there beyond, you know, the upfront costs and the washers and dryers? Because in, in episode five, we got into more of the stuff in that ballpark. So I always think about that first brand new car I bought. And I knew I wanted a car. I knew I wanted to get a, a reliable car to drive that had a brand new engine and it looked great. But I couldn't afford the air conditioner, the side view mirrors, the AM, FM cassette radio, and all the other extras that came with the car. And as I drove it after a year, I'm like, God, I could have used an extra mirror. Man, is it hot outside. So what we do is we present a total package of how we would build a store, meaning we would put in the ESD POS system where you can do drop-off laundry if you have an attended store. You have the ESD credit card system, which actually gives a credit card reader on all the washers and dryers. They swipe at the machine. You actually have counting. There's so many little pieces and puzzles, camera systems, alarms, all the little nuances that we can put to the locations, even, even things that don't pay you back, such as a reading center for the kids. That all brings goodwill to the community. So those are dollars that you'll be investing into the real estate. And like I said in the very beginning, it's like that new car that you just didn't want to spend the money and you should have because after a year of driving that car, you realize what you're missing. The little cost that we, we present will only help the investor manage his store without having to go to it every second. Well, Howard, you know, we are a fan of your metaphors. So appreciate you throwing another one in there. And I think what you just talked about is so cool. It's one of my favorite parts because that's really where the creativity comes in and, and you have that creativity and flexibility to, to try out some things. And then my other, maybe my overall favorite part is what we talked about in episode six, mainly just because it has the name Max in it, maximizing cash flow in my laundromat business. So Rex, I, I couldn't resist. Rex, what can you do to maximize cash flow in your laundromat business? Advertise. It's the name of the game. You have to advertise. Uh, if people don't know you're there, then no one's going to come. So that could include anything from, uh, from sending out mailers. We're big proponents of Yelp. Uh, almost everybody has a smartphone nowadays. AdWords are a big part of that. Um, you know, so we'll do any, uh, any promotion we can. We even do radio promotions. Key is you want to build excitement surrounding the store. So, and, and you could also have banners that you put up as well. You, you could have um, the grand opening banner, the grand reopening banner under new management, anything like that. Uh, it, it drives people in. We also have uh, every time we have like a grand opening or anything like that, uh, we, we always grill out hot dogs and give those away to customers. Um, we also have, um, as Howard mentioned before, we have our reading center. So every Thursday we bring, you know, we, we bring in a volunteer and they read children's books to, you know, to the kids. Um, which brings more people in. It brings goodwill within the community. Uh, anything you could do to bring people into the store for no matter what the reason, um, it's, it's always going to be a positive. Positively. Well, Howard and Rex, thank you so much, guys. This has been a wonderful first season of Laundry Money. And we've covered in this first season everything from why you should start a laundromat business to how to start your laundromat business to all the costs and expenses and information you want to know about profitability as well. Now that we're pretty much wrapped up with season one, I do want to turn it over to you guys for a little glimpse of what's to come, what's ahead. So I want to ask you guys, you know, what's next? What should the listeners expect going forward in future editions of Laundry Money? 
we're going to bring in guests who've done this before, who have been in the industry, people that have, that, that have done what we're preaching, the proofs in the pudding. And, and they're, they're going to tell you, and then we're also going to bring in, um, we're also going to bring in vendors, people that have been in the industry for uh, you know, a long time. Uh, we'll bring in bankers, those laundry specific bankers that I mentioned. Um, we'll bring in service tags, people that can go over how to do preventative maintenance on your machines, how to do the little things that add up to big things. in, in the end, we'll bring in guests that, uh, that, that have done this and know the industry in and out. Well, there you have it. Laundry money, laundry money, laundry money. Thank you, Howard and Rex. And thank you listeners for tuning in to this first season of Laundry Money. You can bring your laundromat business to life by visiting lakesidelaundry.com slash podcast and filling out the form. You can also use that form to let us know anything you want to see in future seasons and any questions you have about the laundromat business in general. Until next time, keep it clean. The numbers discussed in this podcast are based upon estimates and may vary from location to location. Past performances are no guarantee on future estimates, but are used as a guideline.